Cosmetics. You know, I, I see it as one of those things that a lot of people have a problem with or embrace. And then obviously there's a wide array of people in between. You know, people think, oh, well, girls shouldn't wear makeup. Well, okay, whatever. It's your opinion, I suppose. I mean, anybody can wear makeup if they feel like it. My question is, why isn't makeup encouraged for men? Why is it just a female-only thing, apparently? That I don't understand. See, my thinking is, well, I guess my, my thinking in the past has been that of sort of discouraging the idea of makeup. And in a way, I still maintain that. Personally speaking, I would prefer to not worry about um, the makeup. And, and by extension, I guess you could say, I would prefer to be with a woman who doesn't really worry about makeup. If she wants to add it, that's fine. Uh, preferably, though, that if they, if she is in fact wearing makeup, it's a minimal amount. And again, this is just my own personal thing. I, I guess it's just because I would rather find myself attracted to the person, not the face they put on. Um, because you know, in in the end, it that's what it ends up being anyway. You're attracted to the person. You're not attracted to just a face. The face is valuable, of course, because it's a piece of the whole. Um, but, you know, it's, again, it's a personal choice. Everybody has their own specific criteria, I guess. But at the same time, you're going to expand over to, when talking about cosmetics, you're going to expand over into cosmetic surgery. Now, this area is, I feel, probably a bit more controversial overall. Most people would probably have something against it unless it was a medical thing. You know, you just lost a lot of weight or you were born with you know, a cleft palate or something along those lines. But I'm starting to think that it's going to become more okay. In fact, it will become, I mean, it already is to many degrees, but I think the majority of society will find it to be more okay, more acceptable. And may even do it themselves. But not for necessarily the reasons that we perceive it to be current day. Whereas it's mostly just uh, fixing small problems here and there. And then, you know, with many things it becomes somewhat addictive. And then people continue to do it over and over and over again. Plus the technology isn't nearly as good as it could be. Obviously it's getting better and... I, well, okay. With regards to where I can see it actually becoming, first of all, more controversial is where it already is. And that deals with uh, the transgendered community. There are plenty of people out there already who think that if you're transgendered, you're just fucking nuts or something like that. And you just need to get a grip on yourself or whatever BS crap. But the thing is, is that one, there is no gender binary. We think there is because we see, you know, vagina and penis and then that's how we associate gender. But that's your sex. That's your physical gender, if you will. But that's not your mental gender necessarily. The term cisgender is usually, unfortunately, used in a negative fashion uh, by the sort of radical feminists, the rad films. Tumblr tends to be the sort of 
I guess, scapegoat in that regard, even though they're everywhere. And the cisgender means, it basically just means that you follow along with the, I guess, stereotypes associated with your physical gender. So, for instance, me, I am a straight male, and I would rather engage in sexual congress and emotional connections with that of a female, preferably a straight female. Whereas somebody who might be gender queer is somebody who, for various different things, that's the thing. It, I don't even really know all of the different terms, even the, the simpler ones. You know, queer just basically means that you don't sort of fall in line. But the real question is, is what designates cis gendered versus queer? I mean, you could say that I'm queer and because I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm not a rough and tumble kind of sports dude who, you know, loves NASCAR, even though I'm from fucking Texas. You know, it, I'm going to the damn ballet next weekend because I want to. You know, that, for me, is enjoyable. It's more enjoyable. Some might say, well, what are you getting out of it? You can't bet on it. You can't do it. I don't care. Why do you go to the movies? Same difference. You know, it, it's a little bit more elegant. Another thing, I enjoy figure skating and various other, I guess you could say, aesthetic sports per the gym, gymnastics. And, you know, a lot of people would find that to be less than manly. I don't want to play football. I typically find sports boring. I don't really care too much about cars. But, you know, at the same time, those are like the excessive stereotypes. Those are like very much American-centric, mid to, yeah, mid to mostly 1900s. And that's just how we sort of identified ourselves as a country. So, therefore, those are probably more cultural. But then again, what is that sort of societal gender that we identify with? Is it in line with the culture? And so when you have somebody who says, well, I feel more like a female... You could say that their identity falls in line more with what society sees women to be. The people who have an issue with this is when they feel like, oh, well, why are you changing your physical self? Well, I mean, why would you change anything physically? Why do you, why do we prepare uh, fruit and vegetables so that they look different. There is an art to, well, art, but we perceive it differently. You know, I, I don't know any studies specifically, but I'm pretty sure the main reason why the culinary arts are what they are is because when you see your food look a certain way presentation you will experience it differently it's a psychology thing a lot of people don't pick up on this they think psychology is hokey they think it's cracked or quack doctory etc and the thing is is that psychology has been around a long time. But what we understand psychology to be modern psychology, more or less, has only been around for about 100 years, thanks mostly in part to Freud, who obviously, if anybody has kept up with a little bit of psychology, most of his theories have been thrown out the window. Now, a lot of his basis have still been used to 
be a metric. Because, I mean, there's a lot of... There's a lot of useful information. It just may be the wrong connections. So it's like, oh, well, I've got a bunch of dirt. Well, yeah. But the reality is, is that dirt's made of stuff. And that stuff could be useful. I mean, even diamonds in the dirt. You just got to filter through it. You know, now neurology is becoming even more prominent. Um... With that being what it is, I mean, really what it boils down to is it's all chemistry, which, if you think about it, is just electrical signals as well. Just electrons moving from one chemical to another or creating bonds between chemicals, etc. So that's just going into a totally different direction. Uh, to sort of get back to the whole transgender plastic surgery cosmetics thing, the way that I see it is this. Right now, transgendered people are still considered discriminated. Well, they aren't considered. They are. There are people who commit hate crimes that are associated with transgendered persons. And that's fucked up. It really is. It's not your business to fix somebody else for them to be what you think they should be because what they're doing is weird for you. And, and especially violence? I mean, justify that. Seriously. I, I'd like to hear justification for that crap. They're not doing anything to you. You know, if you're that kind of person, go join ISIS. Because apparently, you don't give a fuck about other people. So, I can see that at a point, transgendered persons will become more accepted. Their behavior will become more acceptable. And that sort of gender fluidity will become more accepted. A couple generations down the line, of course. And... Our identities as humans may change, perhaps not as drastically as maybe what I, I seem to be insinuating, but when it comes down to it, I could see plastic surgery becoming much more common. Now, it's still pretty much unwise for anybody to do it while their body is still changing, because you never know how it's going to change it. You never know how that's going to affect it. Granted, it may come to a point where things are better in the future and you could even make necessary adjustments while somebody's in puberty and it still not have a problem. Kind of like when you get a tattoo. If you get a tattoo, gaining weight doesn't make your tattoo look wrong per se. It just stretches just like a balloon with a picture drawn on it. Now, there could be a point where if you lose a lot of weight afterwards, it starts to, you know, depending on how the skin changes and everything, it may end up going horrible. But that would have to be really drastic weight gain and drastic weight loss in order for something like that to occur. Puberty is kind of a drastic change, though. So it's generally not a good idea to get any kind of aesthetic, you know, cosmetic surgery while you're in your formative puberty years. Once that's over with, who cares? Well, the people who care, the assholes, who think that you should conform to a specific idea, to a specific picture that they have in their mind about you, even though that shouldn't matter. So to sort of continue along this line of thought, I'm going to deviate slightly. <laughs> um, there's a book called Ring World. If you've never read it, I suggest you do so. It's a science fiction novel, and it kind of has all the really good components of what science fiction should have overall. Uh, and it's actually condensed pretty well, considering. It's written by Larry Niven, and inevitably it talks about a giant 
world. It's uh, basically a huge ring all around. It's at a distance from the sun, just not our sun. That star, that ring is about the same distance as our Earth is from our sun. But the ring is continual all the way around the orbit. So it doesn't really create an orbit anymore. It's just a giant spinning ring. Um, but getting back to the cosmetic part, in the beginning of the book, the main character is going to a birthday party. I believe it's like his 100th birthday or 115th or 111st, something along those lines. And he's this really old man. And, you know, he's, he's at the party. And, like, there's all these different people, different species and fascinating-looking persons, entities, what have you. Well, come to find out, he's not really an old man. He's more like a dude in his 20s, even though he is, like, 100 years old or so. But the cosmetics that are available within this fictional realm allow you to effectively change the way you look drastically. The, uh, what is it? The focus of affection, the love interest. Yeah, there's the words that I'm looking for. The love interest for the story She's initially somebody who has, like, blue skin with flame red hair that, like, looks like fire and has, like, these silver veins, like, almost sort of coming in and out of her skin, you know, as an accent. But, like, super vibrant sort of midnight blue type colors, something along those lines. It's been a long time since I read the book, so the details are a little fuzzy. And then, you know, at some point in time or another later, that is removed. Now, the removal process, I think, is somewhat vague, and so is the application process. But it got to me into thinking, and I was like, that sounds like it would be awesome, actually. You know, think of cosplayers and, and movie stars and body painting and all that stuff. People right now, in some capacity or another, affect the way they look to take on a different persona. And a lot of times we're okay with it. I guess we think that it's okay if it's temporary, right? But I'm okay with it being permanent. You know, sure, it's a little striking and weird to see some dude with a bunch of implants below his, you know, subdermal implants where, you know, he looks like a Klingon from Star Trek, but hey, yes, it's a little weird, but it's not horrible. You know, there may be some things that, there may be some repercussions that we don't know about, sure. But then that can be said with anything in life. You know, what is it? People who split their tongue so they look like they have snake tongues? That's kind of cool. It's weird, again, but it's kind of cool, too. I mean, not safe for work warning. <laughs> I wonder what oral sex would be like. Blowjobs, cunnilingus, and all that other fine stuff. It's got to be interesting, right? You know, and sort of trying to connect the dots here. We already have plastic surgery. We already use it in a cosmetic sense. Who's to say that due to transgendered persons and gender reassignment surgery being more commonplace, um, smaller aesthetic changes that, you know, one, it, one, it becomes more affordable to the average person they'll be more likely to do it. That's why people do it, because it's affordable. You know? Porn stars, I mean, what is it? Breast implants are like a thousand bucks now? 
something. I don't know. The whole procedure takes like no time. It's an outpatient procedure. Sure, there's a bit of recovery time that's associated with it, but hell, nobody seems to give a damn. Unless you're like a 12-year-old. Well, okay, if you're a 12-year-old, that's some fucked up shit at that point because you probably haven't even hit puberty. And even if you have, you're not done. Um, and we don't know what kind of damage that could cause. And if a doctor does that, it's probably going to lose his license. But, you know, I mean, you know, you're 18. All right. And for whatever your purpose is, you want breast implants. And let's say you're done, your body's done. You're, you're like aware. Well, you're an 18 year old. That's your choice. More power to you. The people who are going to give you crap about it. Fuck them. Literally or figuratively, it's up to you. <laughs> you know, and since you have bigger tits, you may be getting more action. Who knows? Um, that's really, uh, that's up to you, though. And, you know, some people feel better about it. And that's really okay. Some people say, oh, well, you should try to fix the problem. Well, sometimes the problem is a lot easier by just hacking and slashing a little bit and sewing it up. Who are you to say? I mean, maybe you got some stuff that you could change. But that's neither my place or the other person's place to say that. It's up to you. But it's also not your place to tell other people that they shouldn't be doing these things. Besides, again... Going back to the whole science fiction thing, I'm hoping that we have such amazing cost-effective plastic surgery that they start getting like package deals that are like a hundred bucks, you know, and, and maybe let's incorporate it into genetic manipulation so that we can have, like we could change our skin color or whatever, eye color, hair color, etc. Maybe I want to be like totally bald, right? I want to be completely bald. Then, you know, I'm like, nah, let's get some gene therapy and now I'll have a full head of hair again. Why the hell not? It would make the acting industry amazing. Like, <laughs> you could look like a tiger person. I don't know, like, to what degree, you know, structurally, you'd be able to pull that off. But... If it got so cheap to where it could effectively replace prosthetics, how amazing would that be? You know, we, we don't, we look at the permanency of it. And why does it appear to be permanent? Because we don't have the ability to make it non-permanent. Our current understanding of human physiology says this is something that is basically not going to be reversed. Because the reversal process would be more damaging and so on and so on and so forth. But, you know, that's why we have people looking into this kind of stuff. Not necessarily for that reason, but we have people looking into gene manipulation and trying to understand how to reverse aging and how to make healing faster without it being uh, taxing on the body itself. You know, synthetic healing has been a thing for, fuck, maybe a, it's definitely been more than a decade, you know, if not more than a couple of centuries. Some might say, oh, such and such is unnatural. Well, so is a damn band-aid. The natural way to go is to let your wound just be gaping, let your blood flow from you, and hopefully you don't die from infections, and from blood loss, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's natural. That's the natural way. Despite the fact that we have literally physiological and physical responses to certain stimulus, you know, when you, when you cut your wrist or something by accident, you, you clamp down on it. Why? You're applying pressure. You could say that's evolution there, though. You could say that that behavior was exhibited by somebody 
And because they did that, they survived, had progeny, and their progeny passed on that sort of instinctual behavior to clamp down on an open wound, to apply pressure. And we know from first aid classes that you should apply pressure to a wound. Why? Because it stops the bleeding. At least it slows it down. By constricting the blood vessels, you prevent excess blood from escaping. And also by covering it up with a clean cloth, you prevent bacteria from entering the wound. You know, we... Medical science has gone pretty far. Who's to say it couldn't go a lot further? I await our ability to change our appearance the same way we change our clothes. Cosplay girls right now are pretty cool. There's cosplay dudes out there that are pretty awesome too. Obviously, because I'm a cisgendered male, I want to have sex with the hot cosplay girls. But what would happen if a dude was able to change his physiology, his anatomy, temporarily to become a female? And I didn't know. And then I banged him. Technically a her in that case. Well, I can't have a problem with it if I don't know, right? But then if I know, then I have a pos- then I'm in a position to make a judgment. But then at that point it's like, okay, well, now I feel more like it's a lie than anything else because I wasn't made aware of it originally. There wasn't a there wasn't a full sense of honesty. And because sex in general is a very vulnerable act, it's good to have a bit more information, a bit more knowledge about your partner. But if society has grown in such a way where they don't care, where this is so commonplace that telling someone after the fact isn't actually a surprise, then I'm also of the same mindset at that time and I'm accepting of it. It's really all what it boils down to. It's the changes in society are what change how we do things. So fuck it. Let's change our skin and become crazy aliens for the betterment of everyone.